This story is of a lady called Lata Bhagavan Khare. This lady was about 62 years old. She was living in the rural area as a farm worker. Now, the poorest people in India are the farm laborers. She and her husband had grown up as farm laborers. They had raised three daughters. And finally, they were married. So the two of them practically had no possessions because they had spent it all in the children's marriage. But they were happy with their life. Husband was about 65 years old when one day he became sick and then felt terribly sick. Now she tried whatever treatment she could figure out, but the sickness was increasing. And she took her husband to the nearby hospital. And the doctor, he said that this is a serious matter. You have to take your husband to the district hospital. Now that was maybe a hundred kilometers away. She didn't have money. She borrowed something, she begged something and she put together what little paltry sum she could get. And they went to the big city. They reached the hospital. It's very intimidating for this farm laborer people, white collars, blue collars. But she picked up the courage. She got herself registered, got the doctor's appointment, sat there. And when her turn came, she explained the whole thing along with her husband. The doctor wrote a battery of tests. Get these tests and come. She had already finished her money in the registration and the travel. So she took her husband out and said that we have to go back. We don't have any money left. So they got out of the hospital. Now outside the hospital, you know, every Indian hospital outside has got these eateries. From the cheapest to little more where patients, the families of patients, they have some little food to eat. So there was a thelawala. Selling some samosas, said, you know, before we get onto the bus, let's eat some samosas. The samosa was served on a newspaper. And on that newspaper, she saw an article, Baramati Marathon, <laughs> prize money available. She asked the shopkeeper, what is this money that is being talked about here? He said, there's going to be a race and those who win will get the prize money. So she said, I really need money. She went to the marathon. Everybody else was young and they had the sports attire suitable for the marathon. You know, the running shoes, the sports kits. Fortunately, they had a category for little seniors as well, maybe above 40 years. So here was an old Maharashtrian lady, you know, the Maharashtrian Married ladies, how they tie this sari behind and all. She said, I have come. So first of all, this guy kept showing her. She said, I want to participate. They kept on declining. After one hour, they just relented. Are Mataji, if you have to run, okay, you run. So they had a little lesser distance for the seniors. It was still pretty serious matter. Maybe one fourth marathon or whatever. And when the race began, she was running with chapels. After a little while, the chapels broke and she kept running barefoot. I have seen the photograph of her, her running barefoot. To everybody's astonishment, she ran as if the devil was chasing her and she won the first prize. Reporters asked her, that, what happened? Have you ever run a marathon before? She said, it's the first time in my life I'm running. So she took the money, she got her husband treated. And next year she came back again to again participate. For three years in a row she won the race. Now when I came across this story, I said, look at the power of love. It was her love for her husband that gave her a purpose.
सो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू फाइंड अ पर्पस इन योर लाइफ वाय नॉट इग्नाइट योर लव फॉर योर सुप्रीम बिलविड दैट इज द पर्पस टू फाइंड योर लव फॉर गॉड एंड देन इंस्पायर योर सेल्फ टू सर्व गॉड and it is in that service of god that you find the most fulfilling the most satisfying purpose then your life becomes like an endless project where your whole life becomes dedicated to a higher purpose and that gives you the highest sense of satisfaction so the hedonic treadmill is no fun you have been running on it for the last 20 years 30 years 40 years 50 years and still been in the same place the eudaimonic happiness eudaimonic happiness is not about enjoying luxuries but about doing something that is so meaningful and purposeful for you that the austerities also seem like fun so eudaimonic happiness for example doesn't promise you an easy life it promises you a good life like for example when you decide that you need to enhance your health and you follow the austerities that are required they may be painful they may require tolerating distress but when you look back it makes you feel good in the early morning i went for a run at the end of it you feel good remember the serotonin in the head it's the feel good chemical when you feel good about yourself you enjoy that real happiness when you have to work hard on preparing the project report for the presentation to the company board you have to work through the night how painful it is but when you do a great job it gives you that sense of fulfillment so you demonic happiness when you make this your choice you decide with your wisdom this is the kind of happiness it purifies your life it uplifts your life it helps you grow your character with virtue with integrity with perseverance with dedication it just makes you a better person if you have the wisdom to choose you demonic happiness so it may require austerities see like for example athletes who prepare for the olympics how the amount of austerities they are undergoing but they don't feel bad about it because they feel it is for a higher purpose so the key to eudaimonic happiness is finding a higher purpose in your life make sense try and understand through this example listen very carefully this example holds the key for today's lecture one retired chief engineer of the state of odisha he came to me he was about 75 years old he said swami ji i have been in severe depression for the last 4 months i said what happened he said swami ji my wife since last 50 years has left the world my acquaintance with her went back to 55 years when we were in college she was such a dedicated and devoted wife and loved me so much 
and suddenly she is gone. The void in my heart is just so painful, nothing is filling it. My mind has gone out of control. That is why I am depressed. So you are a Swami, you solve my problem. People come with every problem to Swamiji. Are Baba, go to the doctor. No, 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 you have to tell. So I started thinking what to tell him. Supposing I say it was your karmas. Then he'll say, if my karmas are bad, then I'm going into further depression. Supposing I say it was the will of God. Then he'll say, why does God want me to suffer? Then God is bad, then I'm fight with God. I said, tell me one thing. Did your wife love you very much? Ari Swamiji beyond words, far more than I loved her. I said, supposing, now you are an old man, supposing you had left the world first, how would she bear the separation? Swamiji, she would be shattered. She would not be able to tolerate that separation. So I said there, by allowing her to leave the world before you, you have saved her from infinite misery. You have allowed her to go first. You are suffering. You are miserable. But you have saved your beloved wife from so much of misery. That man's expression completely changed. He All his uh, miseries just disappeared. He stood up. I said, listen a little more. He said, no. <laughs> I have got my answer. I don't need to know anymore. So what changed? He suddenly found a higher purpose in those misery that he was suffering. The moment you have a higher purpose, you are willing to tolerate so much of pain. All you need to do is to find that higher purpose. So, that is why, you know, Frederick Nietzsche, the Western philosopher, said that if you have a strong enough why, you can tolerate any what. Take a look at those who love their country, the soldiers, and they go and sacrifice their lives. How do they do it? It is their sense of purpose. Martin Luther King Jr., who led the civil rights movement in the 1960s, he said that if you have not found a reason in your life you are willing to die for. Your life is not worth living. That is his understanding of the desire to find a purpose. So the way to be happy then is you look at people who are poorer than the poorest, but the moment they found a purpose, their whole life came together. So today's message is happiness from a sense of purpose. When you have that purpose that you truly believe in, you will enjoy all the austerities that you have to undergo for it. Mm -hmm.